listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to Change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. It's freedom from emotional and physical clutter. Now today we might only deal with one type of clutter, and that's emotional. So let's pray. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne, washed in the blood of Jesus. I thank you for giving me the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. Make me a quick understanding so I do not judge by what I see with my eyes or hear with my ears, but by what your Holy Spirit reveals to me. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence and ask you to be Lord over this ministry and all that is done here. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to anoint this time of prayer and ministry. We claim the blood of Jesus over this session for our protection. We proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord here and that this is holy ground. We take authority in the name of Jesus and the power of blood and word and command all evil spirits to leave this property now. We claim this room sealed in the name and authority of Jesus. We bind and forbid any evil spirits on the outside from having any knowledge or influence in this room. We thank you that the battle is the Lord's, but the victory is ours. We thank you that you have the right to adjust, shift, change, do whatever is necessary to bring forth your glory, your power, your might, your dominion, your rest, your increase, your victory in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 in the Amplified Bible. And it reads, We have renounced disgraceful ways, secret thoughts, feelings, and desires. And underhandedness, the methods and arts that men hide through shame. We refuse to deal craftily, to practice trickery or cunning, or to adulterate or handle dishonesty, the word of God. But we state the truth openly, clearly, and candidly. And so we commend ourselves in the sight and the presence of God to every man's conscience. So what I want to acknowledge there is the, the fact that we as Christians, can have secret thoughts and feelings and desires and methods that we hide from other people, other believers, even the world, just based off shame. And so when we talk about emotional or physical clutter, a lot of times we don't want to tell other people what we're thinking and what we're feeling because we are ashamed that those feelings will be rejected, those feelings will be talked down, those feelings will be brought up again or thrown back into our face. So we just walk around and we hide how we really feel about things. And in fact, those emotions start to build up because, as I always teach, there's no such thing as an unexpressed emotion. It goes somewhere and it does something. For example, when a person comes in for counseling, I know just based off what type of physical ailments they have as to how long they have been dealing with that emotional pain or that emotional clutter. Because what happens is the body responds to thoughts based off your physical body. For example, less than six months if you've been dealing with a, a particular thought or a particular, you might be in unforgiveness or you might be in anger or you might be disappointed as something or someone. And so if you, it, it starts first muscular system. So you'll start to have muscle aches. Your legs might be hurting. Your back might be hurting. Your neck or your shoulders. And that's how we know that it's, it, it has been going on for six months or less because it always, that unexpressed emotion will attack your physical body first. 
after six months, it starts to go vascular. So it, you're going to start dealing with like migraine headaches, uh, tension headaches. You'll start to deal with uh, like it might be irritable bowel syndrome. It might be more stomach aches, uh, high blood pressure. And not to say all high blood pressure is based off emotional uh, clutter, but a lot of them are. So what we try to do is get people to the place where they're willing to unclutter those emotions. So and it goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 4, 2, and we refute to deal craftily, to practice trickery or cunning. But jump down to that bottom part of the verse. And so we commend ourselves in the sight and the presence of God to every man's conscience. And so not only are we to be accountable to our brothers and sisters in Christ, but we also need to be accountable to ourselves. What is your conscience telling you about that clutter, about those emotions that you haven't gotten to the place where you want to process them? But basically, you, you want to stay away from those emotions and you just hide that and you just keep dealing with it day in and day out, smiling, acting like everything's OK, when in actuality it's not. So let's make a decision today that we'll look at ourselves and say, I'm tired of dealing with emotional clutter of areas that I need to bring resolve to. So let's stop allowing ourselves to be agitated or disturbed through emotional or physical clutter. So let's make that decision today as you receive this teaching that today is the day where I process. Now, there's a difference between dealing with an emotion and processing an emotion. Dealing with an emotion means that we push it down, that we push what we're feeling down. So let's say 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, you're on your way to work, somebody cut you off, you're mad at them, and then you just stuff that. And then the next thing happens, you get to work and you spill coffee on your suit. That's the next thing that happens. Your boss is upset with you because you are late. That's another thing that's happened. And in each one of these incidents, you just stuffed it. You just put it down. Where God tells us that we are to process our emotions. And what does that mean? He said in Corinthians that we are to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So casting down imaginations and reason and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we are to grab that thought, take a look at it, see how that thought lines up with the scripture. And if it doesn't line up with the scripture, we are to make it obey. If it does line up with the scripture, then we know it's of God. We, we receive it in our hearts and in our minds and it produces peace. But if that thought or that reasoning is not of God, then we need to take it, look at it, and say, well, this does not produce life. According to Deuteronomy 30, 19, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. And so you take that thought of life and you keep it. You take the thought of death or cursings and you refute it. You get rid of it. And so that's what the difference is between processing an emotion and dealing with an emotion. The processes is in real time. You look at it see what blessings it brings or what curse it brings, and then you refute it, get rid of it, give it back to whoever it belongs to, figuratively sometimes. So today we made a decision to, to stop allowing ourselves to be agitated and disturbed through emotional or physical clutter. And, and let's, look, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 in the Amplified. I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. Now, the key component about this scripture is that not only is heaven looking, but earth is aware of your choices. But that God has set before us life and death. There's only two choices, either every thought and every emotion and every word and every action either produces life or it produces death. Either those actions, those thoughts, those behaviors produces blessings or they produces, produce the curse. So there is no middle ground attached to this. You can't stay in the middle. Either you're choosing life in every situation or you're choosing death. You're either choosing the blessing or you're choosing the curse. But not only will those choices impact you, 
but it will also impact your descendants. So sometimes you need to think about if you don't care much about yourself, you need to think about the descendants that's coming after you. So that being said, I would like for you to receive the fact that emotional and physical clutter is our choice. So we can choose to hold on to resentment, bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness, or we can choose to release them and receive peace, joy, rest, victory, promotion, advancement, not only in the world system, but most of all in the God system. We can choose to get rid of physical clutter, things that are around us, because it's only a mask for what we really are trying not to think about. So we'll, we'll have a lot of clutter just so that we don't have to feel we'll have to be so preoccupied with that type of clutter that we can't focus on the real issue. So clutter is not just a physical, clutter is just not physical stuff. It's old ideas, toxic relationships, and bad habits. Clutter is anything that does not support your better image or your better self. And this was a quote from Elnor Brown. I'll say it again. Clutter is not just physical stuff. It's old ideas, toxic relationships, and bad habits. Clutter is anything that does not support your better self. So that being said, what are some of the old ideas that you think about? You're living in 2015, and a lot of people keep talking about the good old days. Well, those days are gone. That's why you're in 2015. So what about new life? What about this new life in Christ? What is it about this week? that you are excited about, that you can talk about, that you can have joy attached to it. Instead of looking back on what did happen, how can you look forward to what is about to happen? And these situations are your choices. But emotional clutter wants you to stay in what someone did to you, how they disrespected you, how they hurt you. Have you ever hurt anybody? So the same grace and mercy that is a, a, that you want applied to you should be the great same amount of grace and mercy that you want shown to them. I know that might not sound spiritual, but in reality, we've all missed it. We've all made mistakes. We've all hurt people. We've all been hurt, and we have all ways to hurt other people. So just, just ask yourself sometime, Father, I know what I, they did to me, but what's my nickel in that dime? What did I do to them? Was it my attitude? Was it the things that I said? Were they broken promises? So what part did I play in the breakup or that argument or that disagreement? And we also can, are talking about how toxic relationships. That, that's another form of clutter. Is the relationship bad for you? And you know it's bad? You know a relationship is bad when even your enemies will tell you the relationship is bad. This is not what I thought you would, this is not who or what I thought you would be dating or who I thought you would marry. But that relationship, in that toxic relationship, you're always being put down. Well, if you want to go back to school, well, um, why would you want to go back to school? Why would you want to do this? You should be satisfied with what you have. Well, God is a God of growth. He always likes to advance you to new heights, new levels, new adventures, new discoveries. He always wants you to look to him for things. So he doesn't want you to just stay exactly where you are. But a toxic relationship will have you not growing at all. Don't reach for anything better than what you already have. And let's look at bad habits. What are some of the habits that you can actually look at and know that those habits have not produced well for me? We're going to deal with all those types of things as we continue to talk about physical clutter or emotional clutter. So as we're talking about emotional clutter, let's look at your, your clutter from the past could be holding you back from stepping forward into a new future. Remember the scripture talks about how laying aside every sin and every weight and the sin that does try so easily to beset us? Well, we can lay aside those things. 
One of the things you need to ask yourself is, how fast do I want to be free? People, people say that it takes a while to forgive. But the question is, how fast do you want to be free? Because at any moment in time, you can choose to forgive someone and to walk in that freedom. Or you can choose to let the sun go down upon your wrath. But you got to think about something. A person who's used to conflict, those are the ones that will constantly, they'll bring up issues that will have you upset. They'll walk away resting in the fact that they got you upset while you stay up all night. But it doesn't have to be that way. Be willing to release a person. It says, whose sins you remit, they're remitted. And whose sins you forgive, they're forgiven. Refuse to allow yourself to have to walk around thinking about that issue all day long. Resolve the issue. There's two times that you should apologize when you're right and when you're wrong. And a lot of people get really angry about that. But the fact is, regardless of what happened, somewhere in that, you played a part. Your attitude wasn't always right. As well as their attitude wasn't always right. Your tone might have been different. Just apologize. Ask them to forgive you for your part in the issue. And then move forward. So let's deal with some of the things that we consider emotional clutter. And basically for the, the, the terms that we'll use today, let's think about a word. And that's called unprocessed thoughts. So let's say emotional clutter is unprocessed thoughts. Remember, we say there's two ways you can deal with your thoughts. Either you can deal with the thought by stuffing it, or you can process the thought by taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So you can have emotional clutter in relationships. So so let me list these one, two, three, four, five. Let me list these five, and then after that, I'll go back and talk about them. You can have emotional clutter in relationships. You can have emotional clutter in your finances, in your health in your career, and in your ministry. So those are five areas that I just picked because as a counselor, I deal with a lot of people. And as a result of that, most of the things, people have similarities and things in common. So for relationships, emotional clutter, there would be relationships that are not hindering, that are not producing the fruit that God designed you to be. So you're not being treated right in that relationship. You're being talked down to. You're being disrespected. You're being dishonored. You're not being treated the way that Christ's death, burial, and resurrection designed you to be treated. And as a result of that, you're in a relationship that you know you shouldn't be in. Now, if you're already married, that's, that's different. If you're already married, then you believe for that relationship to get healed, that relationship to get better. You make sure that you seek the counsel of God, either your pastor or a Christian counselor, and you talk to them about the issues that you face in your marriage. Most of all, you ask that person to come in, your spouse to come in and, and, and receive counsel with you. And if, they're refu- if they refuse, then you still have to make sure that you get your healing. Because if you don't get your healing, regardless of what happens in that relationship, then what will happen is you'll recreate that 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 type of pain all over again. And it won't just stay there. It'll start to spread. So if you you married and, and that person has committed adultery, then yes, you have grounds for divorce. Or if that person is uh, dealing with pornography and refuse to get help, then they're committing adultery in a totally different way. Because they are still sinning with their body. Still sinning with their spirit. And I know this is deep. This this, this is a deep expression. So it's emotional and physical adultery. But do everything that you can before you say it's over. And once you say it's over, you know within yourself that you've done the best that you can do. You realize then that I've given it my best. I've given it to God. And let me set a lot of people free by acknowledging the fact that, yes, God hates divorce. But he has already allowed for it. He already knew that uh, that some marriages just won't make it. 
But if you make the decision that you are getting a divorce and you are getting out of that relationship, don't let that be any more emotional clutter. Make the decision, act on the decision, and then ask God to forgive you. I'm not talking about premeditated sin. I'm talking about the fact that you recognize that if I stay in this relationship, it's going to be detrimental to my marriage, to my life, my children, my health, and my relationship most of all with God. So once the decision is made, be clear cut about it. But whatever you do in that, please try to honor that relationship as you are leaving it. And what I mean by that is don't talk to your children about what your husband did to you or what your wife did to you. Only children should hear things pertaining to children. Adult, adult is, is things to be discussed about. So children shouldn't have to deal with things that they have no power to change. So if you know that that relationship is not healthy, I'm talking about dating girls now or dating men, men that are not married or women that are not married but seeking a, a relationship. And the scripture says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers as the manner of some are. And one thing that I, I would like to encourage you about that not only is the scripture referencing about being unequally yoked with unbelievers, you can be unequally yoked with people of different levels. You know, you, you, you might have gotten educated and somebody else didn't. And I'm not talking against the person that didn't, and I'm not talking for the person that did. But you have to be aware that sometimes economical differences, educational differences, will also be an area of being unequally yoked. And not to say that each person can't grow out of those areas or grow past those areas, but I just want to let you know that sometimes you're pushing for a relationship that necessarily just won't work. And please try to hear the spirit of which I'm talking about. All those areas can be overcome. A person who's unsaved can be saved. But if the unsaved person gets saved and you've been in the Lord for five years or ten years and they just got born again, then you need to recognize that there's going to be timeline that has to be uh, caught up on before they start to see Christ the way you see him. So in even in that regard, you might be unequally yoked, but that can be overcome by the fact of your patience, your willingness to wait for them as they seek Christ, the same way that Christ waited for us. You can have emotional clutter in your finances. Right, write this down. The first thing you think about in the morning is basically, for lack of a better word, your idol. If you wake up thinking about your bank account first day in the morning, then that, that bank account has just replaced God. So it has become an emotional clutter piece for you because you went to bed thinking about your finances. Now you're waking up thinking about your finances. And you're going to bed thinking about your finances. And you're thinking about how unorganized they are. Or will I have enough money? Will I run out of money? Will I have enough money to pay the rent? Will I have enough money to pay the mortgage, the phone bill, the car payment? All those things can be emotional clutter Unprocessed thoughts running through your head. What about your health? Are you the weight that you're supposed to be? Are you the you are uh, uh, feeling like you used to? Are you getting enough rest? Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting enough exercise? How's your health looking? Are you on heavy medication because of pain or because of unresolved issues that you stuff emotional pain into your food? And as a result of that, then you're dealing with health issues. What about your career? Have you switched to 15 different careers? Have you decided, no, I don't want to do this, no, I want to do that, and every career you pick is not really the career that you want? Maybe you picked a career based off uh, trying to please someone, please your spouse, please your mom, please your dad. And, and that's going to leave with it emotional clutter because it's unfinished. What about your ministry? How many ministries are you involved in? How effective are you at ministering because you are in so many different ministries instead of focusing on a few that you can give your time, your effort, but most of all, give it your all in those areas? Or do you allow yourself to be so busy at church that once again you are using emotional clutter to hide physical pain? So these are just some things to think about. Let's look at... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. 
and I'm reading all the Amplified, and we're still focusing on emotional clutter. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of the flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasoning and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself, that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So this is what I was saying earlier. Emotional clutter is an unprocessed thought. But here again, the word is telling us how or what we are to do with our thoughts. It says in verse 5 that we are to refute arguments and theories and reasoning and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And so we are to leave every thought, lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. So this is what I shared earlier when I said that for a thought to be in emotional clutter, it has to be an unprocessed thought, a thought that we, we didn't look at, we didn't grab, we didn't bring it into the true knowledge of Christ. We just decided that we was going to stuff it. But what we want to do is we want to get to the place where every emotion that comes to us, every thought that comes to us, we process it and bring it in line with the word of God. Now, let me read the same scripture, but let me read it out of the message. The one I just read before was out of the Amplified. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing, demolishing that entire massive corrupt culture. We use our power for God tools for smash for smashing warp uh, philosophies and turn down boundaries erected against the true knowledge of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. So you want to meet a mature Christian, you meet one that thinks and processes his thoughts in real time and sees whether those thoughts line up with the word of God. So let's say, for example, someone comes up to you and they say something ugly at church. You you ministering the word and you you on a high because you and God just, just had this relationship where he talked to you and you were talking to him. And then you took that and was talking to the congregation. And somebody walks up to you and say, I didn't like a word that you spoke today. It didn't do nothing for me. Then what are you going to do with that thought? What are you going to do with that thought? Well, Father, I just want to thank you in advance that that's just their opinion. But I value your opinion more than I value theirs. And you told me what to say. And we've already had a relationship where my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And I only say and do and speak the things that you have me say, do and speak. So I thank you, Father, in advance that I forgive them for trying to bring me down and I give you the glory and I rest in that. You got on a nice outfit and somebody comes up to you and they said, uh, oh, that color don't look good on you. You just say to yourself, I thank you that I like this color. I didn't choose it for them. I chose it for me. I like this color. I think this color makes me look good. And so, Father, I just thank you in advance that Whatever it is, whatever issue they encounter, I'm glad. I I, I just pray for them. I hope that they get it right. And then you just process their emotion. Self-talk is extremely important. In fact, the way we self-talk is processed, our self-talk to ourselves is 1,300 words per minute. How many words we can speak is 200 to 300 words per minute. We listen at 500 to 600 words per minute, but our self-talk is 1,300 words per minute. So that means that we listen to ourselves more than we listen to anybody else. So it's extremely important to make sure that we're saying the right things to ourselves. And I'll give you another clue. Don't rebuke a thought, replace a thought. Because the moment I tell you Don't think about a red elephant. What's the very first thing that you're thinking about? It's a red elephant. 
The more I tell you not to think about a red elephant, the more you think about a red elephant. So that being said, if I want to get rid of the elephant, I start focusing on something else. So I focus on the fact, for example, I want to think about a nice vacation, a nice Hawaiian vacation. So what happened to the elephant when I started talking about the vacation? I started to think about the vacation, the blue waters, the nice breeze, the palm trees, relaxing in the water, floating in the water, the blueness of the water, the sand on my feet. And you see how I just replaced that elephant by choosing to think on something else. Remember the scripture tells us to think on those things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, virtuous and deserving of praise. Those things that you have both learned and received and seen and heard and me do. And the God of peace will be with you. So I just want to talk to you about replacing thoughts instead of rebuking thoughts. That emotional clutter is just simply unprocessed thoughts. And as I want to take a quick assessment about emotional clutter. And these are questions that only you can ask. What relationship in your life is draining you? Number two. What consuming thoughts are not in accordance with your life you desire? And number three. What distracts you from being fulfilled in your spiritual life and your emotional life? And let's talk a little bit about these. What relationship in your life is draining? Who's draining you? Who are you allowing to drain you? Every time you see them, you take a deep breath. Or you go the other way. Or they say something to you and you can't let it go. And once again, I I say that if you're in a marriage, you have to pray for them. You have to believe God for it. But is it a relationship that you're not married to? Is it a job that you can change positions? Can you apply for something different within that company? Or perhaps even leave? And I'm not advocating running. But I am advocating that there is a time and a place where you have to let something go. And sometimes the best way to process an emotion is to get away from by physical distance. That means going somewhere else. How important, what price can you put on your peace? Because remember, we talked about earlier, if you keep allowing that unexpressed emotion to go somewhere is going to do something in you. So what are you willing or who are you willing to lose in order to receive emotional health? What consuming thought are you not, what consuming thought are not in accordance with the life you desire? So do you always think about prosperity, but you act poor? Are you always saying, we, we call it approach avoidance in the counseling arena, approach avoidance. I want that promotion, but when I get it, I find a way to lose it. I don't show up for the interview, don't show up for the, the uh, uh, bring the necessary things with me. So what consuming thoughts are you thinking about day in, day out? You go to bed thinking about them, you wake up thinking about them. And you know as I'm ministering this, that is sitting something, is flickering something on the inside of you. What do you spend most of your time thinking about? Is it poor me? Is it victim mentality? Or is it victory in Christ? Is it that someone always offends you? It always, someone's always trying to hurt me. She don't like me. This is emotional clutter. What distracts you from being fulfilled? In your spiritual life. You say you want to pray more. But you don't pray. You say you want to read more. But you don't read. You say you want. 
a better life with your children, but you don't talk to them. You say one thing and you do another. What distracts you from being emotionally healthy? It's going to be what you're saying to yourself. It's going to be how you're responding to things. Are you easily offended? Are you quick to process an emotion? And, 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 and understand this. An emotion is only one word. Emotion is like anger, sad, happy, glad. But in order to have that emotion of anger, I have to tell myself something. And that's self-talk. So what am I saying to myself to increase that emotion of anger or sadness? The same way that if a person is joyful, they can't be joyful without telling themselves something about joy. So that's, that's an assessment. Just locate yourself where you are. What relationships in your life is draining? So make a decision. It's based off emotional clutter that I need to release something in those relationships. Let it go. What consuming thoughts are not in accordance with the life that you desire? You desire a prosperous life, but yet and still you're thinking poverty thoughts. You, th- you want a healthy life, but you are doing things that are unhealthy or thinking thoughts that are unhealthy. What distracts you from being fulfilled in your spiritual and emotional health, and emotional life? And what I like to do is in, in my teachings, I always like for people to be able to ask themselves questions and only they know the answer. And then they're free to process the rest of the uh, CD according to that. And what I mean by that, I always have a prayer, I always have a word that you can take those things that you found through the process of the ministry and then apply healing scriptures to it. Now, let's look at. Um, so based off the answers that you gave to those three assessments, this is another category now of steps that you can take to categorize the clutter, but then to do something with it. So based off, do I want to let it go right now? So let's say, for example, one of them is a relationship, the relationship that is draining you. You can make the decision, do I want to let this relationship go right now? Or do I need help to solve this problem? But if you need help, you got to be open to receive the input. Do I need to change my attitude or opinion about this relationship? Do I need to forgive this relationship? Or do I need to address something in this relationship? Now, those are just five things that you could process that challenge with. So what distracts you from being fulfilled? Let's, I'm going to just jump down to number three. Let, let's say uh, spiritually. You say, I need to go to church more, or I, I need to spend more time praying. So then I would go with these questions and ask myself. So I want to let it go right now. So what other things do I need to let go so that I can spend more time in prayer? What other areas can I solve problems that would allow me to spend more time in prayer. What's really stopping me from praying more? Do I need to change my attitude or opinion about prayer? Number four. Do I need to forgive myself for not applying myself to prayer? See, you can forgive others, but you need to most of all also forgive yourself. What do I need to address about this? That's hindering my prayer life. And so I just just came up with these five questions that you could ask yourself. To process emotional clutter. So that you can walk free of this thing. You don't have to stay in bondage because Christ set us free. His death, burial and resurrection was designed to set us free. So he doesn't want us cluttered by anything. And these are just a few of the questions you can ask pertaining to that. So would you be willing to give that to God? So I just want to lead you in a prayer. And you can fill in the blanks in these areas. I'll just use um, um, a relationship. And I'll just use that. And this could be anything. 
So, Father, in the name of Jesus, and, and I just ask you to place your hand on your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, this relationship has caused me a lot of emotional clutter. Because they have talked down to me. They have disrespected me. They have cursed me. And they have said ugly things to me. So by act of my will, I choose to forgive and then just put the person's name in for causing me to feel. And just say how they cause you to feel dishonored. They cause me to feel worthless. They cause me to feel unimportant. They cause me to feel depressed. And I want you to just take that and take it right out of your heart. Your hand was on your heart and just ball it up in your heart, in your hand. And then I want you to hand it up to God. Because he said, cast your cares on me because I care for you. And what you'll do is you'll just release it. So, Father, I release and say the person's name to you. And I forfeit my right to seek revenge or to hold on to any anger, bitterness, or resentment. I thank you for healing my damaged emotion. I desire to be changed by your spirit into the man or, if you're a woman, the woman of God you created me to be. And I thank you for healing my damaged emotion. I desire to be changed by your spirit into the man or the woman of God that you created me to be. So I want you to know that you can use that prayer in any area of your life where there's emotional clutter. You can make a decision that you want to take that out of your heart and you want to give it up to him because whatever he gives you is going to be better than what you gave him. Because he's not a God that will just give you enough. He always gives us more than we give him. So I want to thank you for joining us today for a teaching on emotional clutter. Stay tuned for the next part, which will be physical clutter. And let me just pray with you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the healing that took place today. We thank you that as a result of that, we saw you manifest and you brought things to us that you wanted to bring healing to. Because you are a God of peace, a God of glory, a God of rest. You only bring those things that you want to bring healing to. And so we just thank you that we were obedient to you and we took the, that emotional clutter out of our hearts and we handed it to you so that you could give us something in return. And we thank you that we receive it with thanksgiving and we call it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.